welcome back, everybody, to the Lockdown Sessions presented to you, as always, by our friends over in New York City, True Heel Heat, T-R-U, Heel, H-E-E-L, as in the wrestling, and Heat, Heat spelled normal, but hey, these are our guys. They're coming to us live out of New York City every day. They, they drop knowledge. I tell you what, I learn something from these guys every day. Um, they've got a huge team. I only know Chrissy Love, Top Guy JJ. I found out there's a Drunk Guy JJ, but our main man, SP3, who's always got the latest knowledge, drops out down on our pods too. So check them out. True Hill Heat, proud to be associated with them. Um, but even more proud today to have the King of Couture with us. I'm probably saying that wrong. I don't have the, the correct British accent, but Brad O'Brien, welcome to the show. Thank you. Thanks for having me. And that's Couture. King of Couture, Brad McSexy Pants, whatever you want to call me, I'm the most beautiful man in wrestling. Brad McSexy Pants? Now that's got to be on a t-shirt somewhere, buddy. Uh, well, at the moment I am developing a shirt that is sort of a parody of Johnny Bravo. So maybe I'll get it on there. That would be perfect. I have not heard the name Johnny Bravo in such a long time. What a great cartoon. Well, I'm a 90s baby, so it was about to happen. <laughs> That's fantastic. Johnny Bravo, and then uh, did you guys get Space Ghost Coast to Coast over there? Uh, I can't say I've, I've seen it, no. Okay. Um, no, I was, I was all about Cartoon Network, Johnny Bravo, Courage of Cowardly Dog. This goes on and on, really. <laughs> Wacky Races. Classics. All right, well, we got to get back to wrestling before people are like, I tuned in to Mick Sexy Pants and we're talking cartoons. This week on Cartoon Talk, presented by Wrestling Travel. So, um, <laughs> oh, they go hand in hand. Couture, how am I doing? That's beautiful. It's beautiful. I, I just, I need the accent. So, <laughs> um, <laughs> Brad, um, how long have you been in the wrestling business? Um, I've been in the wrestling business about 11 years now. Um, I started off when I was 14. Um, so first of all, I was joining a few local promotions, uh, one about 10 miles from me, uh, one about 20 miles from me, but they weren't quite consistent enough when it came to their training dates and I needed something. I needed something to go to regularly. So I ended up going to Norwich, uh, home of the Knight family, and uh, joining WAW, and I've been there ever since. So I wrestled mainly for them, um, but they've really opened the door for me. And I've wrestled all of them, apart from Paige. So uh, Paige is ducking you. I, I, exactly, right? <laughs> <laughs> no, well, that's uh, awesome. Yeah, um, when, when when I started there, uh, she was training, but shortly after she was signed. Fantastic. So they, um, what's that like? I mean, how far away is Norwich from you? Did you have, did you move to Norwich or was it driving distance? Of course, you're in the UK, everything's driving distance. Yeah, everything's driving distance. Um, it's about an hour and a half from me. I would say about 80 miles. Um, so it's, it's not terribly far. I've traveled further. But, um, yeah, you need to make friends up there to be able to stay. <laughs> but, well, um, let me ask you this now. I'm going to jump right into celebrity-type questions. Did you see Fighting With My Family? I did, yes. Um, and I was, uh, well, one day I was actually in the background in the market scene. Um, so I actually loved the depiction of the film um, because... Um, especially the, the sort of dark comedy in it, um, because uh, we're, we really are family. We're, we're really close to each other, um, so really we can take the piss out of each other quite a lot. Um, would you, yeah. Would that be a pretty, pretty accurate portrayal of the, the characters of the Knight family? I mean, probably turned up a little bit for Hollywood, a little more funny, but uh, pre pretty... Uh, showed them in a pretty, really good light, yeah. I'd say so. Um, only thing I'd say is Saray and I are a bit scarier. <laughs> <laughs> okay. 
So you you start training. You're looking for a better training facility. Um, is that just is that a phone call to the Knights in WAW? Or you show up on the doorstep, or how did that work out for you? Um, well, going all the way back to the beginning, um, I, I I've loved wrestling ever since I was four years old. Um, I was absolutely hooked on it. My brother hooked me on it by accident because <laughs> he turned it on one day and he bought the wrestling games. I was hooked on it from there. Um, and then when I was about nine years old, I was looking for wrestling schools. Um, but of course, nobody at the time would take on somebody so young. I mean, not just for insurance purposes. <laughs> yeah. Um, but yeah, um, I, I was going to local shows um, that had all of the nights on um, for Hearts and Essex Wrestling, which was quite close by probably about three miles from me. Um, and it was actually my parents who contacted them because um, originally it was, um, it was sort of like a birthday treat for my parents to take me all the way up to Norwich, stay the weekend. Um, well, they, they were really hoping I'd give it up from there. <laughs> okay. <laughs> they, they thought, oh, he, he might see that it hurts. Um, but they weren't anticipating a high pain threshold. So um, I, was, I was hooked instantly. And really, in, in hindsight, they should have seen that coming. Um, and yeah, now, now I've been part of it ever since. I'm, tw I'm 25 today. And um, yeah, it, it's, it's not going to end anytime soon. That's awesome. So a couple of things I want to unwrap there in that story. So when you first get hooked on wrestling, you're young, obviously, but who, uh, what are you watching on TV? What, who, is there a superstar that you kind of follow or somebody on TV that you're like, man, I got to do that? Who, who, was, uh, who was the guy you like, guy or gal? Um, well, it was actually the Hardy Boys at the time. Okay. Um, they, I believe at the time they were sort of making themselves known as the new brood. I know, well, a classic tag team. <laughs> yeah, yeah but, that's cool, man. Yeah, they and uh, mainly Jeff Hardy, really, because the multicolored hair, it stood out. He took so many risks. And, I mean, I don't know what attracted me to that, but I suppose I take a few of those risks nowadays. Um, but, yeah, originally it was Jeff Hardy who got me into it. Jeff Hardy still going strong today, just on the yeah. Hell in a Cell pay-per-view versus Elias, I believe. So, uh, that's yeah, awesome. Yeah, exactly. Nice Still in fantastic conditioning. Yep. And still, I tell you what, for that body taking that much abuse for so long, I mean, it just, they, they both of them were continuing to kill it. You know, Matt recently uh, in AEW, I'm not, I'm not up on if he's, if he's taken a little bit of a sabbatical or whatever, but I haven't seen him in a while. Yeah. But. Yeah. Uh, no, the Hardy Boys were it back then. So yeah, you're you're right on, you're right on board. I mean, all the, uh, you know, yeah, they're exactly. they're one of those uh, the guys want to be them and the girls want to be with them type of uh, type of people. Oh yeah, oh yeah. <laughs> and uh, when I was younger, I even grew my hair out just like Jeff. Um, and yeah, not not really the best idea when uh, you're a little fat kid with long hair. Um, yeah, people didn't take kindly to it back then. <laughs> well, I've got the COVID hair, so now I'm a big fat kid with the longest hair I've ever had <laughs> in my life just because I don't know if it's safe to go to a barber. And I thought, well, I've never had yeah. it this long. We'll see what happens, you know? Yeah, exactly. I mean, I'm growing mine out, trying to trying to find some sort of a style for it. I mean, that, that's why I've ended up with this today. Um <laughs> But, uh, Looking good, man. It's uh, what was it, mixed sexy pants? So hey, you got to go with it. Well, um, uh, it's it's gonna catch on soon. Trust me. What, once I get that t-shirt out, it's gonna catch on. Um, but at the moment, it's mainly my friends who uh, call me that. <laughs> now, once this drops, you're gonna have to jump on it so nobody steals that from you. But oh, hey, you right. heard it yeah. here first. Um, yeah, yeah. You talk about you know, now being nine years old or whatever, playing wrestling game, I assume you're going to talk video games right here, right? 
Uh, I mean, I can do if I've got enough time. <laughs> no, but it was, a, it was a wrestling game. Was it a video game? Oh, uh, back when I was like four years old, um, I would watch my brother play SmackDown for the original PlayStation. Um, that got me absolutely hooked. I started playing SmackDown 2 after that um, when I was old enough. Well, really considering the age rating, I, I probably wasn't old enough. Um, well, they but, probably gave you a controller and just didn't plug it in. Yeah, yeah, probably now that I look back at it. Um, but yeah, I, I absolutely fell in love with that game. I fell in love with the industry and it is still going strong, that love. Now, um, did you, uh, your parents, you talk about your parents taking you up to Norwich um, and kind of, I was going to ask you, but as you kept going, you're like, they're kind of maybe hoping that you'd fall out of love with it. Um, their family, a strong supporter? Today, I know my family was kind of like, e I don't know, they still kind of are, but uh, um, parents? They've, they've always supported me, what, whatever I've done. Um, I couldn't thank them enough, really. Um, they've been my biggest drive, my biggest support, uh, my family and my girlfriend. Um, they, they love me turning into someone completely different. Um, although it is sort of, just an extension of my natural personality. Um, I mean, it, really, they, they are the best supporters because they took the time out of their day to take me there. Um, and they wanted to see whether I would stick by it or whether this was just a phase. Um, but yeah, they, they really helped me to get to where I am today. That's so important. You talk about your family, not just your parents, but... Um like the girlfriend supporting you. Um, I found in such a long time in the business, like a lot of people uh, will have trouble understanding why you're, you're not home on the weekend or, or what you're doing. Yeah. And I love it how people think that you're, because you travel, you must be doing something awful on the road or cheating on them and stuff. <laughs> and it's like, guys, we're trying to survive on like a peanut butter sandwich and sleeping in our car and just trying to get back home. <laughs> you know, it's, uh, yeah, it's, it gets uh, rough. Um, I mean, I mean, it has gone difficult on occasion, like, uh, miss it, missing birthdays, missing special occasions, uh, to go out and do what you do, what you love. And, you know, it is nothing against the family, but it, you got to do it. You got to do it on weekends. You got to, you got to get out there. You got to get your name known. And that's the thing I try to tell people here, even now, is that a lot of people, I'm in Wisconsin over here in the United States. Um, and there are a few guys that with lots of talent, lots of yeah. talent. But, um, and I guess I can't really, it's, I'm basing it more on last year that I'm going to like 2020 is kind of a wash, but you got to put yourself out there. You got to take risks. You got to try to, um, you know, you could, you could wrestle every other weekend at the same bar or armory, but you got to try to push yourself, get out of state and just kind of get past that level of comfort zone. Uh, and then you yeah. come back, you come back to your local stuff. I'm not saying don't do it, but get yourself out there, put yourself out there. Uh, yeah. Cause you never know where the road's going to take you. So, um, so we've been able to run shows over here since June. In Wisconsin now every state over here is a little bit different um, but you guys have been kind of in a rut over there not been able to do much have you when was the last time you were in the ring Brad um well I haven't had a match since about January um, but that's for a couple of reasons um, I've had a bit of work done on my shoulder um, but that that's just a matter of wear and tear um, I mean, I'm pretty lucky to not, not have many injuries considering how long I've been doing it. Um, but yeah, I, I felt I needed to take, take a little time, get that fixed and come back better than ever. Now, you in the middle of this um, from January, uh, I got a hold of you in April because we were going to sponsor in Tampa. Of course, wrestling travel, the best travel company for rest, pro wrestling in the world. We bring fans from all over the world to their favorite okay. events, Wrestle Kingdom, WrestleMania. You get your tickets, you get your flights, you get your hotel, 
You get to hang out with some cool wrestling stars. But yeah, that all changed, man. Wrestling tra uh, WrestleMania was canceled, and we were scheduled to be um, hosting uh, and promoting the WrestleMania pub crawl with all of the uh, proceeds going to Connor's Cure. Um, yeah, that's for been, pediatric that's cancer. Amazing. And at the last minute, Wednesday night, now remember this last WrestleMania was a two day event, Saturday yeah. and Sunday. Uh, Jamie, the organizer of the WrestleMania uh, pub crawl, gets a hold of me and says, Hey, I'm going to do a virtual pub crawl on Twitch with all of the proceeds going to uh, the Red Cross to kind of help the pandemic. And I tell you what, yeah. I didn't understand virtual. I didn't understand Twitch at the time. I didn't. I said, But whatever. I'm in, so I reached out to a ton of guys and gals, and you very graciously helped us out with that. And I'm very proud to say we raised close to $3,500 for the American Red Cross or the Red Cross in general. It was up to them. But um, at a time when we really, I mean, not that we really understand what's going on with the virus right now. But at a time where people were like, I don't know where, where my next dollar is coming from. So while $3,300 might not sound like a lot for a charity drive, but it was huge. So we want to yeah. thank you for uh, helping us out. It's my pleasure, honestly. Um, I mean, over in the UK, we thought it was, this whole lockdown was going to last three weeks, which is ridiculous in hindsight now. But to raise that amount of money is spectacular. Yeah, this, I want to talk about the lockdown for a little bit because I want to. Obviously, you're you have you got your shoulder fixed up. You're resting, but what did you do now? What have you been doing? Because you've had it rougher than than most. A lot of people here in the states can travel, and they can go to Warrior Wrestling in Chicago. They can get themselves booked on shows. Our state, like I said, you can. But how do you keep yourself in that wrestling zone? Uh, keep it up there in this time when you when you haven't been able to do anything. Well, um, I've actually been trying to fall in love uh, with becoming a fan again. So I've been doing my research. I've been constantly watching the network. Um, I've even started up my own little uh, custom figures, uh, like side projects on the side. Um, that's called Figure 8. I've just brought out a Facebook page for it. Um, but pretty much I'm just recycling old old Jacks and um, old Ruthless Aggression figures and uh, reinventing them, making them custom and, uh, yeah, sending them out in my spare time. Um, I've also started up a little belt collection. When I say collection, I've only got two belts so far. Um, that, that's got to be the uh, Attitude Era world title and also the European. What is your favorite uh, of any promotion design? What's your favorite? Uh, is it one of the ones that you have or do you have a, besides the two that you have, what would be your, if you could get any belt that you, you don't have right now, what's, what's like your favorite design? Um, I mean, in terms of what belt I want next, I, I want the Attitude Era Intercontinental belt. Um, but in terms of like, all-time favorite sort of designs. Uh, I've got to say the WCW US Championship. Very it, cool. Stunning. <laughs> yeah, I like those kind of classic looking belts. I'm going to back up to the custom figures because I recently, uh, when I was younger, of course, I'm much older, all I had was the 1985 LJN Hulk Hogan, and I'm not even sure if they oh, came wow. out. The rubber <laughs> figures. But I've been to uh, with wrestling travel. We go to different fan conventions and stuff, and I was across from a guy in Chicago who had all of these original from like the eighties. The LJNs were like that's all I could afford at the time was the Hulk Hogan. But I wow. looked at one and I'm like, the Warlord looks so cool. And he goes, Yeah, that one's like three hundred fifty bucks. And I'm like, Holy cow! Ew. But <laughs> he gave me that gave me. He said, I got a bunch, because I said, I started collecting them at like charity shops and stuff. I would see, you know, like a hillbilly gym or something that the paints oh, wore yeah. off. But I'm like, yeah, hey, I want to, being an adult, I find is all about going, hey, can I get the toys that I couldn't afford <laughs> when I was little? Like I kind of want them. And uh, 
he ended up selling me a box of like 25 figures for or like 40 figures something is ridiculous like 25 bucks wow but wow. i recently joined a group on facebook um it said lj in the title but yeah they're customizing figures and that is such a cool thing to me um how did you uh, i guess you look it up on youtube but how do you become proficient on that or uh um well to be honest I, I was just trying to find things that i could do with one arm um so uh yeah holding a paintbrush that that was right on my alley um i had loads of old figures from like early 2000s in my loft um i probably thousands of pounds up there <laughs> just just gathering dust um so i thought hmm may, maybe i could sort of save money on selling merch and paint myself into these figures try try and find some that sort of resemble me in some way loosely um just repaint them reinvent them and sell king of couture figures but um i've found over time that more and more people have become uh, interested in my designs and uh i've given them their very own mini me that's cool that's i was gonna ask if they were for sale these guys are making um one of my favorite ones and again i'm gonna age myself here but they took a a Rick Martel and a Tito Santana figure. And they had oh, like wow. a before. Um, and whatever they do to get the paint off, and they painted them up like strike force. And they're just stunning. Like the people are making figures. Uh, you know, these LJNs are just rubber. So people are talking about steaming them and boiling them and, and straightening out the legs and putting them in different positions, cutting the head off one. And I don't, I'll, I'll never be able to do it, but it's fascinating. Oh, no. to watch. Yeah. No, at, at, at the moment, I'm just repainting them and uh maybe adding bits on using clay but yeah that that's a bit advanced for me at the moment but um <laughs> if i if i can get a figure that loosely resembles someone and they're happy with it then that makes me happy well so you said it's figure eight you got a facebook page now yeah it's f-i-g-u-r and the number eight cool man i'm gonna check it out i'm gonna join because i did look on uh Doing my uh, journalistic integrity of looking you up on, uh, you know, obviously we followed each other on Twitter since uh, since April, but I did see some figure stuff there, and I'm like, cool, I'm glad you brought it up. I would have totally, yeah, <laughs> it, it fascinates me. Like, I have no artistic ability whatsoever, so that, that's cool. Uh, well, I've got little bits. I, I mean, usually my background is uh, graphic design, photography, um done some filmmaking uh just to sort of hype up matches hype up shows um so really mainly computer based but i, I felt might as well try and get into this see how i do at it and uh if i got a talent for it then carry on that's awesome now without giving away what you do during the day outside of wrestling are you um are you working from home? Are you still having to travel into work? You, you know, um, uh, I'm still traveling into work. I've okay. been quite fortunate to be a key worker. Um, so yeah, uh, no, nothing's really changed in that aspect. Um, at the moment, I'm I'm just happy. The shops aren't like it was at the beginning of the pandemic. I'm glad I can get some toilet roll, really. <laughs> yeah, crazy. <laughs> So let me, we go out, we're, we're from Manchester. I'm obviously in the United States alone, the last man standing here in the U.S. But just so people watching this from the U.S. and Canada and wherever around the world, um, this is a lot to put on you, so you can pass on this question. Um, I hear a lot about you guys maybe going into a second lockdown. Um, they were telling you guys to go to restaurants and they kind of scaled that back roughly where we sit today october 27th 2020 what is uh what is life like in the uk right now with uh with lockdowns not lockdowns etc well um at the moment it's it's kind of different everywhere because um it, it's more the north of england and also wales that are sort of in full lockdowns um there's three different tiers to to how we measure uh, the restrictions. 
Um, so at the moment, my area, Essex, is in a tier two situation, which means uh, people can't mix indoors, only the household can stay indoors. Um, we can meet with groups of up to six, mixing households outside. Um, yeah, and you can only go to restaurants and pubs with your household. So um, that gets really frustrating, really difficult. I've had to cancel Halloween plans. Um, oh. But at this point, I, I'm kind of hoping um, that there'll be more restrictions quicker just so we can get past it and move on to hopefully having a less restricted Christmas. I 100% agree with you. Over here, we have in the state um, a face mask mandate that's been in place for a while and people are arguing against it. But I tell you what, if I go to a store and they say, I, I put my mask on anyway, I'm trying to protect other people. Yeah. So whether, you know, and I go down such a, a huge black hole of, is it really the coronavirus? Is it as bad and this and that? I'm like, I don't care if it's real. I don't care if it's fake. I'm not taking the risk and I'm not putting anybody else at risk. I was at the store the other day and yesterday, two, two people walk in without masks. I'm like, how do you just not throw a mask on for your visit in the store? I mean, yeah, I, I, yeah. I, I, like, I don't like to get political, but like with that, I'm like, yeah, you know what? Uh, I don't like wearing a mask at all. No, I do, no one does. But I do it. I just do it. You know, when I go out, I'll throw it on. Who cares? Yeah, you know? the worst that can come out of wearing a mask is having the inconvenience of having a bit of cloth over your mouth and nose. Um, but the worst from not having it on is people catching it and people dying. So, yeah, I'd rather wear that mask. Just throw it on. Well, here's the thing. It's not just uncomfortable. I'm a, you probably can't tell. You can, really. From this but I've got a very big squash so from ear to ear when I put a mask on I finally found one my sister bless her soul found one big enough for fat heads like me but otherwise the cloth was just stretched and I'm like holy cow I can't even breathe out of it but I've got one that fits now it's almost too nice, big. Nice. and I'm like yeah get, throw it get, on get itchy with the beard yeah and, and that's the thing for me I, I'm lucky I'm not lucky. I wish I, I wish the world was in a better place, but uh, I get to do a lot of stuff from home. So um, yeah, yeah. I, I don't have to I just wear it when I go out and I just do it. And we're, uh, we're in a kind of a hot spot right now in the States, these rural areas. I'll tell you what, I'll do it Celsius for you. But I woke up this morning, uh, 11 below Celsius here. Ooh. So I'm wow. always, I'm curious because I'm like, when uh, I got to do some research before I talk about it, but I would think that the colder it gets, maybe it helps kill the virus, you know, a little bit on, on surfaces. Yeah, you, you'd think so, but I think we got less cases during the summer when it heated up. Yeah. yeah. So I, it is no normal virus. Um, well, it is, it's not like the flu. Um, but yeah, I, I, I find it important at the moment to just, just find any sort of positives in this situation. Like, I mean, there, there's so many sort of mental health issues during this time, seeing the same four walls each day. Um, so I've grown my facial hair out. It, this isn't usually like me during lockdown. Um, I'm going to shave this bit off and uh, partake in November. Yeah, so, another good cause. Yeah, yeah, the mental health aspect of it is crazy because I think if I – didn't start hosting the lockdown sessions because I've even caught my, I literally have caught myself the last few days uh, talking to myself and in a weird way where I'm like, where's that coming from? Why am I? And it's just like a, a phrase here or there. Like when I was a kid and I'm like, wow, I'm losing my mind. But you, know. you get those moments. You really do. I know everybody's struggling. So hopefully, they're watching the lockdown session. You said you had the network. Now, do you go back at all, Brad, and watch like stuff from like even before you were born? Are you kind of a, a connoisseur? Do you take it all in or do you kind of go back and watch your favorite stuff? Or um, I like to research my craft. Um, I mean, it, it's not just the stuff on the network. 
Um, I'm also, I've also got a few uh, World of Sport DVDs as well, um, because at this point that there's so much of the American style going around that people don't realize that British wrestling is, is just so spectacular. And it's so different when you look back at those DVDs and you see things that nobody else uses nowadays. Nobody else does nowadays. Yes. So what's old is new now. <laughs> you, dude, you must be watching my lockdowns or we're on the wavelength because I go through this with everybody. I'm like, I want to see an atomic drop. I want to see the abdominal stretch, the Russian leg sweep, uh, the bulldog. Yeah. And then as soon as I mention it, somebody's like, oh, my buddy uses that all the time. But uh, Colonel De Beers in the AWA, the front-facing oh, yeah. driver. <laughs> I mean, I've said somebody can get over using some of these old classic moves. Because I, when I say, I used to say atomic drop, think about the honky-tonk man taking that atomic drop. It's iconic. Oh, yeah. I forgot who it was, <laughs> and they're like, not honky. And, and I, as soon as I say it, it's going to pop into a lot of people's head. Think about Rick Rude taking that atomic drop, and I immediately yeah. can see it. Yeah, um, I'm on the same wavelength. <laughs> I, think, awesome. I, think, I think there's actually a Twitter page that's dedicated to just Rick Rude's reaction to an atomic drop. Somebody said that. Somebody's got to drop that Twitter <laughs> handle in my comments because I want to see it. I've, oh, I love the somewhere. Mongo McMichael one. Um, oh, God. There's, that there's one. so much for Mongo. <laughs> yeah. What, uh, what type of – don't give anything away, but if you could bring back one move, what would you bring back? What would the king of couture bring back? Um, I mean, that is – it's not specific moves, it, it's more just the style. It, it's, it's the technical aspects, really. I mean, you see uh, stars like Timothy Thatcher, uh, who are bringing that kind of style back. Uh, and you also have all the guys on NXT UK giving us bits and bobs of that, giving the, a bit of a hybrid between American and British style. But I think we, we should definitely keep the British style, keep it alive. Keep it going. Uh, remember Mick McManus, Jackie Palo, um, all of the great classic wrestlers. I'm so happy to hear you say that because a lot of guys, you're young, you're a young fella, but it's nice to, you know, like, hey, you recognize where where your craft came from and paying oh, homage and keeping it up. And the other thing is too, I'm a physical media type of guy because everything. Yeah. If it's it could be on Netflix this week and it could be gone for two years tomorrow, so especially with my wrestling, I keep uh, I keep a lot of DVDs. I always would go before a show and go out and check out the vendors before the fans came in, and yeah. I was lucky. Yeah. Enough. I think I spent more than I was paid, which wasn't much anyway, but like a month's worth of pay uh, one time in Pennsylvania. This guy was selling uh, bootleg DVDs. Like, they put together, like, the best of Rick Rude, Bam Bam Bigelow. Uh, I've got one that's the history of the NWA television title, and it's every wow. title change that they captured. And I'm like, dude, I'm not going to find that on the network. I might find it on YouTube or something. But High Spots in the United States puts out some great stuff. Um, but I'm glad that you're, you're the guy. Because the world of sport, I've heard of it, but I can't tell you. I mean, I'm going to have to go on YouTube. and. And watch some of it. Now being involved with this, I'm like British wrestling is great. You you'll see. There's so many subtle uh, differences, uh, but it just makes it feel so much more real, so much more sort of bar fight, really. Um, but yeah, I, I mean, I love having the network. I love watching old NWA, old WCW, um, going back to the Attitude Era as well. You know just for nostalgia purposes, just see what it was like back when I was five years old, um, actually having context to it as well. Um, but there is part of me that misses collecting my DVDs um, from Silver Vision uh, or recording it off the TV and uh, onto videos. Um, so yeah, that, that, that's kind of a downer for me, uh, but I absolutely love what the network Produces and the the amount of shows and variety you can see. 
Yeah, hundred percent. It's such a such a great convenience. I used to have to do VHS tape trading, and the first one I went on eBay. I wasn't even tape trading; I was tape buying. I bought the. Um, and this is classic. I think everybody has this in their collection somewhere. But the the best of uh, Tiger Mask versus Dynamite Kid, like nineteen seventy eight through like oh, eighty one, yeah. like just ahead of their time. Like would still would still be great matches today. But it was that high flying and stuff. And I'm glad you're like me. I like I take a lot of shit. Because I do like a little realism in my wrestling. Like, I'm not uh, – I, I, if it's going to put asses in seats, I don't want to take anything away from it. But I'd rather see a good old-fashioned British brawl, a Donnie Brook versus uh, MJF and Chris Jericho uh, going into uh, a little dinner theater. Uh, it is what it is. Oh, yeah. People like yeah. it. It's funny. <laughs> but I'm like, man, I just want to see old-school wrestling. In fact – SummerSlam last year, I find myself and the rest of the wrestling travel team sitting two rows in front of Billy Corgan. Oh, wow. I tur turn around and say, hey, Billy, this is before the NWA show started. I go, All right. I just wanted to shake your hand and say, I love what your the plans are with NWA. And he goes to me, I just want to see big dudes beating the shit out of each other. That's what I grew up on. And that's what, like, that was oh, the basic formula. And I'm like, dude. People can say what they want about Billy Corgan. I just saw him on some list on Facebook of celebrities you don't want to meet. He couldn't have been a nicer guy. But then again, you know what? I wasn't bothering the shit out of him. I just said, hey, we'll let you watch the show. But I just wanted to say thanks. We had a probably, if it was two minutes max, but he was nice. And I wasn't, because uh, people say, don't meet your idols. I met Rick Flair. He's a freaking champ. But guess what? Yeah. I I met Ric Flair under the right circumstances. I didn't see him out dinner and go, hey, can I get your autograph and bug the shit out of you? So, which leads yeah. me to my next question there, Brad. Have you in your 11-year illustrious career, you been on some shows with some some bigger names, some guys that you looked up to? I don't know how it works in uh, – because it's hard to get the American stars uh, on the independents over there. But have you have you found yourself lucky enough to be on any shows with some guys? Uh, there have been quite a few, yeah. Um, I've met the likes of uh, Scott Hall, uh, his son Cody, um, Ken Anderson, there's Steve Carino, Joe Legend, um, Billy Gunn, Mick Foley I met last year. Uh, got a picture with him, that was, that was great. It, again, it's like the inner fan in me w was coming out and I was like, okay, I'll, hold it back, hold it back, Brad. <laughs> but... Um, yeah, I mean, I've I've wrestled a few of them as well. Um, like, I mean, that there's been uh, I wrestled Will Ospreay um, a few years ago. Uh, that was for IPW, um, and I have to say, what one of my highlights was uh, tagging with the Blue Meanie. Um, awesome. it, me and my tag partner Ollie, uh, we we were tagged uh, Blue Meanie versus the London Rights and Joseph Connors. From uh, NXT UK, um, and that was just amazing. I mean, I, I'd never been involved in a dance off before, but uh, yeah, it, Meanie wanted it. <laughs> I'll tell you what, um, there can't be too many people that are nicer than than Brian the Blue Meanie. Oh, he was lovely. Yeah, yeah. Because um, I I had a mate at the time. He he had just injured his arm, and I, I just asked Brian. Look, do, do you mind just sending a, a get well message to my mate? And he was like, yeah, of course, no problem. What's his name? Where, you know, is he a worker? All that. And he, he was just a pleasure to be around. Just so relaxed. Oh, bro. And I want to say, too, while, we, while we're talking about the Blue Meanie, go to Mind of the Meanie on Twitter. He's got a great podcast now, and I know they're very close to a 1,000 people on their YouTube, but – um, support the guy, support everybody. You know what I find out too? I always, I always end up going, oh, this guy's super nice. This guy's super nice. I find it very rare um, now that somebody that's kind of made a name for themselves is not, like when you meet him in the right circumstances at the arena, in the locker room, wherever, I found it more rare that somebody's an, a dick versus somebody that uh, isn't nice. Um, right, yeah. The dicks I find are the, the guys that have been 
on the indies now for three years and think that they are uh what 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 gets me is you don't have to do the worker's handshake but you need to say hi in the locker room yeah and, be a, and yeah. you need to wipe your feet before you go into the ring show the respect for the sport and the people that have come before us that yeah. irks me i know it shouldn't but it does no no the the ring is your church pretty much you know it is it's your sanctuary it allows you to escape from normal life and it allows you to be everything you want to be in wrestling 100 now we're wrestling travel in your 11 year career have you made it um uh, got any matches outside of the united kingdom or outside of england i'm sure you've probably been to wales or wherever but have you made it uh to any other international places um i i wrestle fairly regularly in uh, germany um cool. for independent pro wrestling um that they're based in lubeck and um I, i've also wanted to be a part of power of wrestling pow um, they're more based towards Hamburg. I think um, we had something set up, but unfortunately, COVID. Yeah. My life. COVID's <laughs> messed it up for so many. Yeah. No, yeah. that's cool. So yeah. here's a guy right now, the king of couture, Brad O'Brien. If you're watching this, this guy's got a passport. And when things are safe, he, he, he's resting his shoulder. He's ready to rock. So promoters, now is it, now is such a great time for promoters and promotions to be looking at talent and reaching out to them and kind of planning uh, their comeback. So uh, I I'm just hoping that a few people see this, share it, and uh, it, gets you, it gets you a little notice. Now, do you have a bucket list, Brad, of, uh, you know, you've been in the ring with uh, Blue Mini, a lot of good people, but I'm sure, as we all do, the, and y you find yourself when you do a bucket list in danger of, forgetting somebody so let him off the hook here but do you got any names that you're like hey before it's all said and done i wouldn't mind getting in the ring with who um i mean there's just, there's just so many um but are we, are we talking uk uh you are talking anybody in the world I, I, we can go big names and that way uh, your buddies on the independent scene aren't going to go hey dick you never mentioned me but uh I'm going to name one for you right now. I'm going to say that if you could get in the ring with Jeff Hardy, you'd be all about that. Oh, yeah. Oh, yeah, definitely. In a heartbeat. <laughs> but, um, yeah, a few others. Um, I, I'm pretty sure I can narrow it down to maybe 10. <laughs> <laughs> um, I'd like to face Array and Knight again. Um, we, we have done once. Um, that was a brutal six minutes. Um, so, so I would like more time with her. Um, also, uh, Nick Aldis is on my list. Um, I've met him a few times, true gentleman. Um, but yeah, he, he's on my bucket list. Um, this is one that I wish could happen. Um, Doug Williams, um, he, he retired just last year, I believe. Um, but yeah, again, such a huge talent. Um, who I'd love to get in the ring with. Um, it may be wishful thinking, but you know, I, I'm always going to hold on to it. Um, in the US, um, it is it's mainly sort of old TNA X Division stars. Um, so I would love to go against Alex Shelley. Um, Pause right there. One of the greatest wrestlers ever. Totally, yeah. totally people. You overlook him, but yes, I'm an Alex Shelley fan, Mark, whatever you want to call it, half. So yeah, that's awesome. Yeah, big time. Um, and it is not just the high flying style, he, he knows his basics, he knows his technical ability. It's amazing. Okay. I'm gonna pause. I'm, I'm being a terrible host right now by interrupting you, but no, no. <laughs> Go we, we've sponsored Warrior Wrestling out of Chicago. Now, Warrior Wrestling is an independent organization, they they They've had like maybe 10 or 12, but they do super shows. They bring everybody in. So August 7th of this year, they were the largest attended wrestling event in North America since the virus began. 500 people socially distanced in a football stadium, uh, American football stadium. 
because uh, they host it at the Marian Catholic High School. They decided to do three shows in September. I'm going to get to my point in a second. Um, okay. <laughs> the match up that I'm looking forward to the most because I watched um, Alex Shelley versus Austin Aries a summer ago, and it was just off the hook. Great wrestling. I can imagine. Um, so the match that's advertised in one of these September series, it's Alex Shelley versus TJP. And I'm going, dude, this is going to be amazing. Oh, yeah. Prior to their match and the match before, um, the skies open up and we got a downpour. So they yeah. take a few minutes and they replace the ring canvas. But the ring ropes are wet a little bit. TJP and Alex Shelley do like a 15 to 20 minutes, all ground reversals, just technical, old school ground game wrestling. And if that's ever available to you in the UK on YouTube, I'm going to send it to you because you will appreciate oh, that, it. So, yeah, be great. Yeah. That's why I like him. He's a wizard. He can, he'll, he adjusts everything. And I got a chance to speak with him on camera just before um, one of his matches. And uh, a guy like that, even though I've been in the business, it's just intimidating to me when you talk to somebody that you respect so much. Oh, yeah. Um, yeah. Just because I know, like, that dude, Alex Shelley has more wrestling knowledge in his pinky uh, than I have in my body. So he just so like Al yeah. Snow, when I did the interview with Al, I'm like, oh, shit. I love watching Al Snow's interviews. And I'm like, I don't want to look like an idiot in front of him. But I, yeah, dude, yeah. sorry to go on a public list. We got to tag Alex Shelley in this. One of my oh, favorite, oh, favorite no. wrestlers. So happy to hear you say that. <laughs> yeah. No, um, got a few others just now, sort of inspirations to me. Um, I mean, Chris Daniels, you cut. Can't fault him, in my opinion. Um, Jerry Lynn, I, I, I may have taken a few things from. Um, <laughs> and last of all, it, it might be a bit of a uh, bit of a uh, uh, what's the word? Just one that's not expected. Uh, bit of a dark horse, you know. Yeah. Um, and that's Takamishi Noku. Yeah, it is just. His stuff in the late 90s, I was absolutely astonished by. Uh, I was, the, the types of things he could do, it was as if he was a superhero. He, he just defied gravity. <laughs> yeah, the awesome names. And I know your, your list could go on and on and on. Let me ask you this. Now, you're an you're 11-year veteran, but you're, you're, you're 25 years old, so you're young. What is, through your 11-year career, uh what's one of the best pieces of advice that you've received in pro wrestling um i would say it's i mean a bit tif typical but uh to stay humble i mean despite being the king of couture and the most beautiful man in wrestling um yeah and also no matter how long you've been in the business you don't stop learning you really don't i mean you can watch other people and you'll think, wait, that, that, that was incredible. Like, that suits you. Like, you know, you, you can be anything in wrestling. You, you, can be, you can be the biggest superhero, you could be the biggest supervillain. And wrestling just brings something out of you that you don't even expect. But, yeah, that... That's that's my favorite bit of advice. You never stop learning. No, and that's true. And once you know, so many people I've seen that think they know it all, and it's like, man, you don't yeah. even even you don't, even the you know a fraction, <laughs> right? And I love I love uh, you know I'm gonna I'm gonna have one more question here for you because I'm gonna respect your time and the people that are watching it. But um, what I uh, whether you're the uh, mixed sexy pants, the king of criteria, you're cocky. What I'm loving about getting a chance to talk with people is a guy like you who's, who's been in the business for 11 years, but you're relatively young at 25, but you recognize the past. Like I'm so, I love that we're talking about the lost moves and stuff like that, that there's guys like you that are still going to uh, keep that alive and appreciate it. Like you can appreciate, like you're, you're, you're in that awesome age right now. For, for me, I'm old. I'm stuck at the old school, but you are appreciate the old school, but obviously you appreciate what's happening now. 
um, the high flying, the high spots and everything. But, you know, if, you, if you, yeah. can, you know, somebody that can combine like these high spots in with a nice ground game and, and, and class. Yeah. Uh, yeah stuff, good, cause stuff. I mean, cause I mean the spectacle and the high flying of it, I'm not going to lie. That's what got me into it. That, I mean, seeing Matt and Jeff, uh, week by week, I mean, how could you not be astonished by it? Um, but then when I actually joined WAW, I was showing the British style, the technical style, and it just made me think this, it, it's, it's like art. I mean, it, I still see it as a sport because I'm, I'm working out six days a week. I'm training like an athlete. This is a sport to me. Um, but to me, the British style, it just really brought that grittiness of a real fight as well as the sort of finesse of, of, of a dance It is the best way I can put it. But oh, to me, me, it is real. It's, it is the sport I fell in love with. Brother, if I wasn't a fan of yours before, which I was, I just became an even bigger one. One more person, when you talk about finesse and wrestling style, um, somebody that we didn't mention, and there's probably a, a thousand more, but Jonathan Gresham in Ring of Honor is another guy uh, that I think really brings it. I saw him and Alex Shelley again at Warrior Wrestling wrestled to a draw in a fantastic match. But, uh, you know, Joe Hendry, he's a British guy. Oh, there's yeah. A, yeah. There's a thing over here called Pluto TV. I'm sure it's worldwide, but they have a channel on there that streams old impact. And there was something from London in 2018. Almost looked like they filmed the house show, but it was Joe Hendry and Jonathan Gresham. It was a little bit of a comedy match, but they were going move for move. And it was just, uh, I got to find that. I'm sure it's on YouTube. So actually I tried to look it up, but it just looked to me like they were putting on like a clinic for all of us watching. Like fans love it, but kind of a wink and a nod uh, to yeah, the rest. Of yeah. Checking it out. So, King of Couture, Mr. McSexy Pants, my final question for you is my most important of the day. As you know, uh, we here at Wrestling Travel support wrestling from the top, which is the, the stuff that's on TV, all the way to, and I don't call it the bottom, I say the beginning, the independent leagues, because that's where everything is. But how can we support you where can we find you on social media you gotta you gotta plug the figures page um do you have any merch and when merch comes out where do i get it so so plug the socials that are okay for the fans to go and and find you and support you sure okay uh bear with me um i've got you can find me as brad o'brien spelt with an e not an a um on facebook i also have a like page on facebook um twitter is at king of couture instagram is the same at king of couture um youtube i'm brad o'brien um and of course the custom figures are figure eight f-i-g-u-r number eight oh uh, what's up what kind of stuff you got up on your youtube brad uh just uh little highlights of some of my top matches um from both germany and in england um yeah as soon as i can get more footage i'm going to be posting more um but that that's what you can expect just a maybe a few travel videos as well fantastic so like everybody watching this if you can like and share and go to a youtube like support a guy like brad it means a lot every like every thumbs up uh i don't know how algorithms work on the internet but i know the more people that are going hey you know what thumbs up or even just get your watched hours up We're, some of us are stuck sitting at home and some of the best things we could do is support each other and i'd love i'd rather support uh, a guy like yours page versus some big time corporate entity thank so you, thank you <laughs> absolutely and do you have did you say do you have t-shirts or anything you are going to make t-shirts up but if i wanted to buy a t-shirt from you do i just hit you up on one of your socials yeah, just just send me a message. I'm I'm constantly on social media. Um, I mean, especially during this time. Yeah. Um, so I've got po little posters, big posters, and I've got t-shirts ranging awesome. from small to double XL. 
Cool. So now my last question, I think we kind of covered it, but I just want to make sure that I've got it the right. If I'm just a fan, I'm a wrestling fan. I'm not a wrestler, but I'm like, dude, I love collecting figures. Can I contact you and go, hey, could you make me a Justin Clapper figure if I send you a, a picture of my face and stuff like that? I mean, I know yeah, it's course. tough yeah. because you got to figure out, you know, if you can look like it. But if I'm, I'm just a regular fan, I can buy a, I can buy a figure, huh? Yeah, yeah, definitely. I mean, it's most likely going to be um, a recycled figure. It's, go it's yeah. going to be, yeah, something that I bought. Um, but yeah, that that would be absolutely no problem. It's not just wrestlers, although you know that's kind of my main thing but uh if you want a mini me then i'll make you one that's awesome and, and just so we all yeah we're all aware that obviously we're not gonna go to the ljn factory and do a body scan he's gonna be as close <laughs> as a guy can get but for, for christmas and that's holidays you know surprise your boyfriend surprise your girlfriend with a figure of them themselves let's, let's keep brad busy not too busy i want you to still have a life but it'd be kind of cool if you enjoy making the figures and uh, oh yeah get them out there that would be awesome so brad i want to thank you again all your help with the charity work for wrestling travel um and, and thank you for joining us here's what i love about this i'm hopefully going to get a hold of you and we'll do a part two because part twos are the best on these interviews because uh, it'd be amazing already, yeah yeah we already got the beginning out and now we can just shoot the breeze so uh thank you so Sweet. much for Sweet. joining us Thanks for having me. Thanks a lot, Justin.